Hello everybody, and welcome back to Sounds of Her Love episode 10. Just hop right into things, let's just do it. Last time, we found out that Carrie's mom uh, filed for a divorce, and she wants custody of Carrie, but she lives in Wales, and we live in Japan, so Carrie would be taken away from us. So Carrie is in a depressive state, and we are trying to get her out of there, and just show her that we're there for her. So, we're like, hey, meet us at the spot we always meet for school, and that's where we are. Okay, here we go, strap yourselves in, let's go. The morning sunlight blinds my eyes on my walk towards Carrie's school. I'm retarded. The morning sunlight blinds my eyes on my walk towards school, more importantly, towards my typical rendezvous point with Carrie. As I get closer and closer, I dote upon what Carrie means to me, my relationship with her. It's a strange thing to think about, but as time goes on, things will start to make more sense to me. As the usual corner of the street enters my vision, the shy, braided girl isn't there. It would be wrong to say I didn't expect this, but part of me looked forward to seeing her adorable aura shimmer in the sunlight. Looking at my watch, it's still a bit early, even if it was late. I, I just combined those two sentences. Sorry, that, that inexcusable, I know. Looking at my watch, it's still a bit early. Pause. Even if it was late, I would still wait for her. Being late to school doesn't concern me now. Cars pass by. Cars pass by me, one after another, as the neighborhood starts to get into motion. Everyone on their way to work or to drop their kids off at school. New drinking game. Every time I misread or stutter or mispronounce something, take a drink. And I'm sorry that I just killed all... 15 viewers on this video. I, I apologize. I, I, I truly do. Unless you have extremely high alcohol tolerances, in which case I, I gave you a fun little game. Alright, continuing on. It's the usual sort of thing for a weekday. Having mine be different yesterday really showed me how much I enjoyed the mornings before, going to school to be able to see her. Every day of my life before had been absent of her, but meeting her really showed me how much of a wonderful person she really is. It's a shame it took a while for her to be able to show it to someone. The clock continues to circle around and around my watch, similar to the thoughts in my mind. Constantly moving, but never really going anywhere. 7.35 soon passes without any sign of Carrie. When agreeing to meet her, when agreeing to meet with her, I would have probably embraced the experience of walking down the road around this time to see her waiting for me with a mild smile on her face. One which I can only assume would quickly turn into a fluster as she would spot me approaching. None of that has happened though, or will happen. I can't imagine Carrie being that happy to see me. Anxiety grows within me, flowering from one of the most painful places for it to embed its thorns. My heart. It's been five minutes now since the usual time we agreed to meet. Not particularly late by any standard. That is, any standard other than Carrie's. Every time we agree to meet somewhere, despite it only happening on a few occasions, Carrie was always early or on time. More so the prior. Maybe my words didn't reach her after all. Kind of makes, uh, makes me think of the... Your line, April, did it reach her? Dude, it, it totally did. For sure, it had to have. Glancing up, up from my watch, one last time, within my vision, I see a figure. Despite the morning sunlight hindering my view, it's clear to me that a girl is walking down the street towards me. As she approaches, I can make out her hair, neatly braided, swaying in the light autumn breeze. Her attire, all too familiar to me, consists of a tan sweater which embellishes her figure. The harp insignia on her chest is quickly covered by her arms as she adjusts the red ribbon beneath her neck, blushing slightly as she looks towards me. It's Carrie. The sight brings a smile to my face. It usually would, but this time means a lot more to me than any of those ever could. I managed to reach out to her. She came. Her expression, however, does not match mine. 
She still carries a troubled expression as she advances further down the street. If one thing is for sure, there's still a lot of work to do before we can make things right, if that's even the right word. All the issues, all the problems that cause this situation are still here. Carrie is still upset. Good morning. She sounds so sad. I'll cue the sad music, too. Good morning, Carrie. Part of me wants to ask her how she's feeling, in spite of knowing the answer. I'm fine, she'll say. That's all it is. Fine. Fine is just a synonym for not good. A quick answer to get people off your case. Carrie knows how concerned I am, but prying into her feelings now would not benefit either of us. Today I want her to feel normal, to experience a day of school like we usually would. Upsetting her by getting into the subject of her parents would just make my efforts all for naught. Instead, I opt to just usher her along with me to begin our school day. I think we should get going. We're going to be late otherwise. Uh, okay. I expect her to apologize for being late, but it doesn't really matter to me. Carrie and I begin our slow walk to school despite having the clock working against us, but we're not in any rush. Big time rush. The greatest band in history. Fact. Dust shimmers in the air sporadically throughout the classroom, giving the day a sense of warmth as the autumn sunlight shines through the windows. All too much of a contrast with the bitter cold of the morning, leaving me with a feeling of unease as the issue issues with Carrie still linger around my mind. Having left her not too long ago to get to class, we separated on a sour note, neither of us really saying anything, but our feelings ever so similar. Ones of sadness, sorrow, and general awkwardness. Getting her to come to school was one thing, but for her to open up to me again will be a completely different challenge. If I'm going to make this day work, one way or another, I'll have to force her to talk to me, no matter how inconsiderate that sounds. Moving my body backwards, I stretch to alleviate the pain in my shoulders. Today is going to be long, but I've gotten through lessons before just thinking about Carrie. Thing is, there's a lot more to think about now, including my feelings. The chimes of the school bell jolt me up from the slumped position of my chair. It's lunchtime, so getting outside as soon as possible is a priority. I want to meet Carrie outside her class for once. Springing up, I grab my bag and swiftly push my items into it in a disordered manner. These are things I have no time to be concerned about. I manage to be one of the first people out of the class, but it's expected that those who sit near the front will always have the upper hand. Carrie's class isn't much of a distance anyway. It seems that their class is still inside. Everyone in our year group is on the same corridor, so it's unsurprising to find myself joining the usual crowd who waited outside the other class for their friends to come out. One by one, people flock out of the classroom. The entire event is quite a scene, as it's already been about five minutes since the school bell rang. The, the lunch bell rang. Uh, just how important was their lesson? In time, the sight of Carrie greets my eyes once again. She still holds the same expressionless appearance she's, always, she's had since this morning. It hurts to see. Hey, Carrie. Shall we go have lunch together? S sorry, I need to catch up with some work. I'm going to copy a friend. All right, she's lying. We're, the, we're her only friend, however sad that may be. We're, we're the only one who's friends with her. So she's, uh, she's fibbing right now, which is not epic. But quite unepic, actually. As soon as I opened my mouth, Carrie seemed to go into a state of shock. Her words sound untruthful, as if she forced out the first excuses she could think of. As depressing as it is, the reality is that I'm the only person she speaks to in this school. 
she wouldn't have the audacity to copy off someone within her class. If she's not ready to speak, that's fine. The entire action itself going back on what I previously decided upon earlier. Forcing her to speak to me would probably send her into another state of shock. I'll let her go for now. Alright, Carrie. Aw, this is sad. I turn around, leaving Carrie behind me as I join the students from her class heading towards the cafeteria. Whether Carrie wanted me to object or not, I'm unsure. However, she won't be able to get away from me this easily. Letting our friendship dissipate like this isn't something I want to allow. I think it's time for a little drink break. Quite refreshing. I find myself sitting in the cafeteria, clutching a sandwich in my hand. A little earlier, the guy sitting in front of me got into a fight with one of the younger students over who'd get the last beef sandwich. I'm not really sure why these things are so popular. You enjoying that sandwich? You better be. I was wounded pretty bad back there. He didn't even touch you. Can't you just let me pretend for a minute? School is pretty boring, man. To be honest, he is right. Having to sit here without Carrie is quite agonizing. A, dis a distressful experience. Putting my entire state of mind into an Oreo McFlurry. Even though yesterday I sat alone in class, being here with this guy isn't much better at all. Are you listening, mate? Sorry, can you repeat yourself? I was saying, what if they introduced lamb into the school sandwiches? There's plenty of sheep and whales, aren't there? I wouldn't know. I've never been. I'm not even Welsh. Neither have I, man. It's just a thought, you know? It seems this guy is pretty invested in sandwiches. <laughs> I just imagine, like, a super autistic guy on the spectrum. Just, like, he goes up to everyone and just, like, has a, a rant about sandwiches. And that's the, that's the kind of guy you need in your corner. The bell rings to signal the end of lunch, causing me to feel more depressed as I now have to face afternoon lessons. Whilst listening to the mundane talk of my classmate, I decide to try again with Carrie. The idea is to walk her home. Pretty bold in itself, but I know for a fact she's not going to be compliant. Dragging her out by hand is one option, although... The action seems really dodgy and disrespectful to her. In a way, it might show her how much effort I'll put into being there to support her. What could go wrong? That sounds like a lot of things, actually. Uh, the classroom is filled with a uniform aura of apathy as it slowly drags on towards the final few minutes. Thinking back on my idea from earlier, I need to find a way to be able to get out before Carrie. It can't be guaranteed that her class will get out late again, so I really don't want to miss her. Raising my hand, I eagerly wait for the teacher to notice me. N -n notice me? I'm fucking stuttering. Uh, asking to be excused for the restroom is undoubtedly the best way to be the first one out of the class. There's about five minutes until lessons end, so there shouldn't really be a problem. Yes, Markapi? Excuse me, miss. May I please be excused for a restroom break? Go ahead, Markapi. It seems the teacher herself is quite apathetic towards her own lesson, sending me off in a tired and indifferent manner. I don't know about y'all, but here in Montana, where I went to school, uh, I, I do not recall teachers laying us out or, or laying us go to the bathroom five minutes before class ends because you're just saying, hey, like I want to leave. So that doesn't fly in my neck of the woods. I don't know about you guys. Let, let me know if, if you were able to go against the system in your school slash uh, area you were educated, maybe homeschool. I don't know. I, I, I've just seen a lot of uh, adult films where the homeschooling happens. Either way, uh, let's move on. I leave the classroom behind me. Some classmates looking shocked after realizing my plan to get out of class before them. Turning down the corridor, I walk slowly towards Carrie's classroom. This time, she's not getting away so easily. 
The bell rings to officially end everyone's school day. I've been waiting here for a few minutes, so in order to use up some time, I bought myself a drink. I like, I was like hiccuping, but like not for a second. So I, I just like, I don't know what happened to me. An air bubble has, has, has taken itself away from my body. All right, I'm recovered. As people begin to walk down the corridor, I toss my can in the bin and continue to wait for Carrie's class to come through the doors. There's our girl. Surprisingly, this time Carrie is one of the first people to get out of her class. Perhaps she wanted to prevent a repetition of the events of lunch, getting out early so she could avoid me. Unfortunately for her, though, as soon as the chance arises, I grab her by the hand and make my way down the corridor with her at a quick pace. Oh, dude, I bet she... She's going to be blushing to kingdom come if we if if we were the ones to grab her hand. She's probably like, oh my gosh, like, what, what a mighty mark copy this is. Her trailing behind me with an extraordinary sense of embarrassment, one which breaks new boundaries. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh yeah. What are you doing? I'm walking you home. Confused, Carrie continues to stumble over her words as I take her with me down the corridor. Despite her being able to let go of my hand, she shows no restraint as she allows herself to be taken with me. Just, just take me. I'm begging you, just, just, just take me right here. As we move, I notice a few stares and smiles from various people from our year group. Even sounds of light-hearted laughter can be heard. Different to how Carrie was treated before, I can only assume that they find the events funny in a friendly manner. Where are we going? Your house. I told you, I'm walking you home, didn't I? Saying that, both of us are almost running as we pace towards the school's exit. Not a speed definable as walking, but I'm still taking her back to her house. Students move swiftly out of our way as we get outside through the school gates onto the next road, with the pair of us receiving the same odd looks and giggles as we finally break from the school ground. I let up my grip of Carrie's hand since the entire action still is embarrassing, more so the fact that running out of the school had caused us both to sweat lightly. Dude, I, I'm, I'm just saying, like, a little, a little sweat? is not going to uh, persuade me to stop pursuing a girl. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> I can trust Carrie not to run off now, so we both slow down into a brisk walk as I take her on the journey back to her house. So, did you manage to catch up with your work? A flustered Carrie walks behind me as she tries her best to let out her words. The sight causes me to laugh, knowing what I've been, what I've seen. Jeez, I, okay, we're gonna restart. The sight causes me to laugh, knowing that I've seen through her lie. It's this sort of experience that I had longed for. Oh, you're you're pretty cute, Mom. No. <clears throat> You're pretty cute. Saying that, Carrie ramps up her levels of befuddlement, causing me to lose myself in her adorable trance. I only told her the truth. What? You really think so? Really. This is going pretty epic. Her face is ablaze with emotion as she looks towards me with a hard blush, fiddling with her hair as it in entwines around her fingertips. Thank you. She meekly clasps her right arm as we continue walking down the road in a state close to silence. Neither of us decide to continue conversation. The fact is that Carrie still isn't feeling good inside. Trying to force her into a state of happiness would just make things worse. I'm fine with being able to come this far with her. Walking down a street, lit up by the afternoon sun. This is something I've always wanted to do with Carrie. 
being there for her, being with her, it brings my feelings for her into question. Our steps are in sync as the two of us walk side by side down a street which is now quite familiar to me. Accompanying Carrie on the way home may have seemed like a brash thing to do, the idea itself established rather hastily. However, being here with her after spending yesterday in a state of worry gave me a sense of relief. The issues that caused this are still present, however, but showing Carrie that she doesn't have to go through it alone is enough of a reason for my actions. We find ourselves idling in front of her house, neither of us really wanting to start the traditional words of farewell. Carrie takes the lead, despite being rather reserved throughout the day. Thank you. I'm sorry about earlier. I just needed some time alone to think. It's been hard recently. It's all right, Carrie. Carrie is still bearing the weight of uncertainty as she faces the chance of having to leave everything and everyone she's known behind to move away. And from what her father had told me, the distance between her and what she cherishes would be quite extraordinary. Remember, Carrie, you have people who are there for you. Even if it's two people she's likely to be leaving behind. I know. You've been a great friend to me. That's why it's hard. With Carrie saying that, the door to her house opens wide despite neither of us reaching out for the handle. Standing before us is Carrie's father, sporting a smile which I can only describe as uneasy. Both of us know the situation Carrie is in, and both of us are trying our hardest to deal with it. Oh, I thought I heard someone speaking outside. Come on in, Markopi. You're more than welcome to stay for dinner. <laughs> Mr. Irwood wastes no time trying to get me inside of his house. All I can assume is that he has something he wants to discuss with me. Dude, he's just basically saying, please fuck my daughter. Please, please just take my daughter. That Mr. Irwood just wants us to plow. Like, that's all that's on his mind. I can do more than guess what it is he wants to talk about. The startled response coming straight from her. You know, we're gonna stop it here. This is this is a a nice little place to stop because I feel good that we we got Carrie to like go to school and be have a somewhat normal day. So that's a good place to stop because I feel like Mr. Irwood's gonna drop some some uh, negative knowledge on us about some developments. And I wanna end on a pleasant note. We'll, we'll, get, we'll leave that other stuff for the next episode. So thank you for sticking with me on this, this wonderful game, Sounds of Her Love, beautiful game, absolutely amazing. We love Carrie, I love you. And since I do love you, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, help me find a girlfriend. And bye bye